guys, I'm back with another video. Uh, today we are going to start a new series that I want to do basically for the entirety of my exchange while I'm in Japan. But um, we're going to start off with doing a comparison between a youth exchange program and a study abroad at university. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot of differences, but I really do think there's going to be a lot of similarities as well. But I haven't really seen many comparisons, I, either on the internet and especially not on YouTube, I haven't seen any, about comparing these two different programs. So uh, I want to do that while I am on exchange. So today we are going to talk about the application process. First thing though, I want to let you guys know that I am going to start doing videos more frequently once school gets out. Started writing ideas in a journal. Um, it was actually part of my uh, New Year's resolution to have one of these and just jot down ideas whenever I think about them and it's been working uh, really well. I just haven't had enough time to film them because school has been kind of kicking my butt recently. I have a lot of really good ideas that I'm really excited about so look forward to that. Okay, so let's get started. First things first, I just want to do a little disclaimer. My experiences are not going to be the same of every youth exchange uh, person that you meet and it's not going to be the same as every study abroad uh, exchanger that you've seen. So my differences are going to be different than other people's differences. Maybe there's not even that many differences at all between these two programs for certain people, but this is just my experiences and I thought that I'd share them with you guys. So right off the bat, the application between these two different exchanges were very, very different for me. When I was applying for Rotor Youth Exchange, the entire length of the application was just, first of all, it's just one application. You had to do a lot of things prematurely, like assuming that you got into the program, you had to just get all these forms done, you had to get um, a letter written in English to your future host family, which you later have to translate, but um, that's not really a part of the application, no translation, because you don't know what country you're going to yet. And on the study abroad side of that, you have a very simple application. Uh, for me, I just did it online where I put in my general info, I gave my transcripts, I wrote an essay saying why I wanted to go on exchange. It took me maybe about an hour to do. The Rotary Youth Exchange application took me like a couple hours to do. So it was very in-depth and it was a lot of work. Uh, the first time around for Rotary Youth Exchange. After both of these applications, you have the interview. The interview is very, very, very different in my opinion. Um, Rotary Youth Exchange scared the crap out of me going to the interview. You basically have like four different interviews in one, and the most scary part of it is that you have a panel of past exchange students, and it's almost said as a Rotary Youth Exchange student that it's a rite of passage to be almost hazed by these past exchange students, but not really hazed, like just like bombarded with difficult questions that you're going to make a fool of yourself doing, but that's the whole point is seeing if you can deal with a stressful situation that you are going to make yourself look stupid in well without freaking out. So I really like the idea of the Rotary Youth Exchange interviews. They're just very intimidating. On the other hand, you have a university study abroad. At least for me, this was not difficult at all. I just literally went in, I had my interviewer look at my application while I was sitting there, and she just asked me a couple questions and then she said I was in. So, also while you're doing these interviews, uh, the country selection is very different. Uh, for Rotary Youth Exchange, I've mentioned this several times before, you actually have really no say in where you go in the end. Depending on where you are, the country choices may range from 3 to 50. So you may just have a couple countries that you choose that you want, or you might literally order every single country that they list. For study abroad at my university, I applied to a program, to a country. So I was applying to the country, not necessarily just to a program in general. 
So you go into this interview knowing that if you get this interview, you're going to that country. So that's really different in my opinion. I personally liked the study abroad one better because I got to know exactly where I was going versus Rotary Youth Exchange. It was very, very nerve wracking knowing where you were going or where you were not. However, I think that Rotary Youth Exchange probably has a little bit better process for this because a lot of times I think, especially when you go with a youth exchange, a lot of these kids don't really know what country would probably best fit them and they just decide to put countries that they've heard are cool or at least this is how I was explained why it is and what happens is you have the interviewers uh, the past exchange students along with the Rotarians they decide on the countries that you should go to and which country best fits you so without the Rotary Youth Exchange process on that, I would have never gone to Thailand. Japan was my first choice. If I had been going to Japan, I wouldn't have met all the people that I met and I wouldn't have fallen in love with Thailand. And so I like the process of study abroad now for who I am now, knowing where I should go and where I think I would probably best work as an exchange student. However, I like the Rotary Youth Exchange process for being a minor and not really understanding traveling in different cultures and where you'll have to absorb the culture and how difficult that's going to be. I think that at the levels that they're at, they're actually very, very good for where you're at in your life. So after the interview process, these two exchanges really, really go in different directions. For Rotary Youth Exchange, if you're accepted, you're in. That's it. Like you're good unless you really, really mess up on something, you're good. As for the study abroad, what I had happened to me is I got accepted to be able to apply to the university in Japan. So I had an entirely different application that I had to do, which I was not expecting, actually. So that's when the real work starts, when you are studying abroad at university. For me, personally, I know that this is really, really different uh, country to country and even, apparently, university to university. But going on exchange to Japan is so stressful with the paperwork. For the health paperwork alone, I had to get an EKG, blood work, an x-ray, vaccinations, and all of my medical history, which took like five hours at the doctor's office. And it's really expensive if you don't have really great insurance for it. So you have to be aware of that. It's really, really intense. And you just gotta put up with it, I guess, but you need to be wary of that. For Rotary Youth Exchange, all of my stuff was already done. And the only thing that I really had to do was get something about the dentist and also just a general health certificate saying that I was like healthy enough to go and me checking off and saying that I wasn't like depressed and I didn't like suffer from anxiety like documented anxiety or anything like that so those two things are really different when it at least comes to going to Japan and doing a youth exchange program something also to be aware of is the time frames are really 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 different for the application for the application for Rotary Youth Exchange I started my application when I started college applications, which is August, the year before you leave, essentially. So it's really, really far ahead of time. For study abroad, you only have about a semester that you do this application process and you do everything, so it's very, very fast paced for this. For Rotary Youth Exchange, I had my first orientation in December, the year before I left, as opposed to my study abroad now, I just had my orientation which was first of all way shorter than Rotary Youth Exchange and also a lot later. My orientation now almost is in line with when my second orientation was with Rotary Youth Exchange if that gives you an idea. I'm just going to say this really quickly even though it has really nothing to do with the application. The orientations are really different because the orientation for Rotary Youth Exchange for me was two different weekends the entire weekends and it was just a bunch of stuff having to do with orientation as opposed to study abroad I had a one hour orientation on my campus and that's it. The similarities I kind of have already like said it while I'm talking about the differences but um 
overall, it's basically the same content where it's like talking about why you want to do exchange, um, why you chose the country that you chose, uh, talking about your health history, uh, having an interview, having an orientation. It's kind of all the same. So for me, it was a little bit easier going into study abroad having all of this past information from exchange. So that's actually how I see it as being comparable, is that it did help me with my study abroad application. I'm going to say this again, every school is very different and every program is very different. Even within the programs, they're very different for the application from state to state and country to country. So just be aware of that. This is just my experiences. And I hope that you guys learned something from this and I was able to help someone. That's it though. Um, the application process is only one small part of your exchange, uh, but it's a very important part, obviously. So next time that I do a video about this, I'm gonna be talking about pre-departure. So I'm gonna talk about visas. I'm gonna talk about orientation a little bit more. And I'm also going to talk about uh, where you're going to live, like figuring out all of that stuff. So look forward to that guys. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you like this and you want me to do more videos like this. Um, I'm planning on it, but I wanna get your guys' feedback if this is something that you guys really do want to see or if it's not really important to you. Um, but okay, uh, thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you guys all later. Bye.